I sent estimate number 547, the Stillwell estimate, to QuickBooks. Now jump back into QuickBooks and open that estimate. I'll click on Estimates. QuickBooks always opens the estimate screen at one past the last completed estimate. Notice that we're on 548. We want 547, so I'll click Previous. And here it is. Choices we made in Job Cost Wizard affect how the estimate looks in QuickBooks. First, notice that all the descriptions are here. In JCW, we decided not to omit work descriptions. Second, we decided in JCW to show subtotals only. The only prices here are for subtotals. Showing subtotals only keeps your item list short. You'll pay bills by category in the item list. A shorter item list makes it easier to find what you're looking for when writing checks. The total is at the bottom of the form and is the same as in both your estimate and job cost wizard. One advantage of QuickBooks Pro is progress billing. That's important on larger jobs. You'll want to send invoices that cover just the work done to date. QuickBooks keeps track of what's been paid and what's still due. To do that, we have to turn on progress billing. I'll click on the Jobs and Estimates and Company Preferences tab. Click on Yes under both Estimates and Progress Invoicing. Now we're ready to turn the Stillwell estimate into an invoice. To turn a QuickBooks estimate into an invoice, click on the Create Invoice button at the top of the QuickBooks estimate screen. We're writing an invoice for just the foundation, so I'll click to Invoice for Selected Items. We're billing for 100% of the foundation, so I'll select Show Percentage. The current percentage is 100 for all foundation costs, so I'll type 100 for all three foundation rows. I'll click on OK. That looks about right. This is an invoice for 46194. This is our invoice. We're done except for one thing. This should be invoice 176. If you're done, you can click save and close. We've sent out the first invoice in the Stillwell job. Let's see how QuickBooks is keeping track of expenses and income. I'll click on Reports, Jobs, Time and Mileage, Job Estimates versus Actuals Detail, and Bill Stillwell. Here are estimated costs for materials. and estimated costs for labor. Actual costs are zero because we haven't paid any bills yet on this job. Actual revenue is the amount billed in the first invoice for 100% of the foundation work. We billed 46194 on the first invoice. QuickBooks is very forgiving. Practice all you want. Experiment any way you want.
then delete any estimate or invoice to remove every trace from QuickBooks. Here's how I would delete the Stillwell invoice. First, I'll go to Invoice 176. With 176 on the screen, I would click Edit and Delete Invoice. Click OK now, and the invoice is gone. Deleting estimates works the same way. When you pay vendors and subcontractors, the amount paid is charged to the job and deducted from your bank balance. I'll click on Banking and on Write Checks. Fill in the Pay to the Order of line. Click on the Items tab. Click on the down triangle in the item column of the check stub to open the item list. Select the correct cost category from the item list. In this case, it's the foundation's materials. Click in the Amount column and enter the amount paid for concrete on the Stillwell job. I'll click on the down triangle under Customer Job and select Bill Stillwell's job. This amount is not billable to your customer, so click on the icon representing an invoice to put a red X over the icon. One check can cover items in several cost categories and even costs on several jobs. But I'm done here, so I'll click on Save and Close. When you write payroll checks, the amount paid is charged to the job and deducted from your bank balance. Click on Employees. Click on Enter Time and Use Weekly Timesheets. Click on the down triangle opposite Name and select the employee to be paid. On the timesheet, click on the down arrow under Customer Job and select the first job where the employee worked. Under Service Item, select a LAB cost category from the list. These are labor subtotal costs from your estimate. Under Payroll Item, select the type of pay, such as straight time. Enter the number of hours worked for that cost category. Any timesheet can cover work done on several jobs and many service items. When finished recording time for an employee, click Save and New. When finished recording time for all employees, click Save and Close. To actually produce paychecks, click on Employees, click on Pay Employees. When done, click on Create.